The Southampton Theory Astrophysics and Gravity Research Centre is a centre studying fundamental science at the University of Southampton in the south coast of uh, the UK. It was formed uh, five years ago in 2012. The Southampton Theory, Astrophysics and Gravitation Research Centre, which we call STAG, is the combination of three different research groups within the university. Astronomy, Theoretical Particle Physics and the Gravitational Group in the Maths Department. And what STAG does is to bring those researchers together in an environment where we can tackle some of the biggest problems in modern physics. Now, in a gravity group, we have two parts. One is doing relativistic astrophysics and classical relativity, and then the second part is doing string theory and holography. My part of the gravity group is focused on gravitational waves. We're interested in how the gravitational waves are generated, uh, what their nature is, and how we can detect them from astrophysical sources. The day-to-day -day research we're doing is focused on gravitational waves from black holes and neutron stars. In the case of black holes, we're interested in the, the nature of gravity, so how Einstein's gravity works in detail and what we can learn from black holes that come together. In the case of neutron stars, we're interested in all the physics of neutron stars and how they can generate gravitational waves but also visible light. Now in string theory and holography, we study the quantum nature of gravity and try to have a unified theory that includes all forces of nature. And one of the lessons we learned over the last 15, 20 years is that quantum gravity is holographic in nature, which means that it can be described by quantum field theory with no gravity but in one dimension less. When we apply string theory to black holes, we get a different picture than is suggested from Einstein's general relativity. The black hole information paradox is a fundamental paradox between our understanding of how black holes evaporate and our expectations based on quantum mechanics. So when a black hole forms, there's a central singularity where our description breaks down, but outside that we have just empty space-time. And in the mid-70s, Stephen Hawking predicted that this black hole would evaporate in such a way that is incompatible with quantum mechanics. And this is completely contradictory to the kind of models of black holes that we get from string theory and holography. In astronomy, we observe compact objects such as neutron stars, uh, black holes. They also do uh, in real-time astronomy. They, they, they observe time-dependent phenomena like supernova or exploding stars. The astronomy group have two main areas of research uh, within STAG. The first are compact objects. These are white dwarfs, neutron stars, black holes, the remnants of a star's life. When a star explodes, these are the objects that are left behind and they are tests of our fundamental theories of physics. They're extreme environments. The second is the time domain universe and we study how the universe changes with time, uh, how objects like compact objects change with time on timescales of milliseconds, uh, years and centuries. I work on superluminous supernovae. These are some of the brightest supernovae that we've observed within the universe. Ultimately, we want to be able to measure how quickly our universe is expanding. And then to do that, we have to have some form of measuring stick. We can use superluminous supernovae as a measuring stick, but in order to do that, we have to understand physically what's going on with them, and that's my job. In the high energy theory group in physics and astronomy, there are four different directions and then uh, they study phenomenology which is close to experiment, they study a lattice gauge theory which uh, studies non-perturbatively quantum field theory by putting the quantum field theory on a computer and then uh, there are theoretical studies which also study holography and applications of holography to particle physics. The Southampton uh, High Energy Physics Group is looking at very fundamental questions in physics like the origin of the universe, how the universe evolved to what it is today, and also what it is made of. So I'm concentrating on, again, fundamental aspects of particle physics. So I'm concentrating on the so-called strong interaction, which is very hard to get hold of theoretically. So um, what we do, we um, define this theory on a discrete space-time, and in order to make predictions for it, we put it on the strongest high-performance computers we can get hold of. Our predictions are then used to make sense of uh, experimental data coming in from accelerator facilities like at CERN, the LHC. Um, we can even think about observations from um, satellites or deep underground um, 
detector experiments. My research is called Phenomenology. So what I do is I take a specific model called Technicolor, simulate what these particles might look like in experiments, and then try to match them with experimental data to see if we can find new particles. I feel incredibly privileged to be part of the theory group and a part of the Stag Institute. And especially as a phenomenologist, I get to work on the theoretical side and the experimental side and I'm quite instrumental in my research in bringing those different parts of the group together and that makes me feel incredibly happy. One of the most exciting things about STAG is the international dimension that we have. We do interact extensively with many different countries in the world and obviously those international connections are critical to the work that we do. And one of the best things about being and doing our research at Southampton is the range of facilities that we have access to. So whether that is to CERN, for example, as part of very large collaborations, or to big astronomical observatories in Chile or Australia or Hawaii, or wherever it may be, I think that gives us a, a synergy between the different groups that is very hard to, to, to match. The hope is that the ideas we're developing now is going to form the physics of the 21st century the same way that uh, quantum mechanics and general relativity you know, framed the physics of the 20th century. Mm -hmm.